Hey guys, long time no see. Do you guys remember this review that I made of a Domestica watercolor course? I guess many of you guys haven't watched it because it's one of the first videos that I uploaded here in my channel. I, I believe it's the third video that I ever uploaded. So if you haven't watched it, maybe you should because today's video is also a review of a second course by the same teacher named Ana Victoria Calderon. So I'm gonna share with you guys everything that I learned in the course, all of the exercises, some personal tips from me, and I'll tell you my thoughts and my opinion about the course along the way. Okay, let's start off by talking about what materials I used for the course. This time I chose to use these Schminke watercolors, which are a bit more pricey than the ones I used last time. For my last review I used these ones that I bought from Amazon and I did feel a difference between them and maybe I'll make a video comparing cheap versus expensive watercolors. Let me know if you would like to see that. Next is paper. I really, really like uh, hot pressed watercolor paper because it's so smooth, especially for lettering with watercolor. I also used um, for some of the exercises of the course, some of these mixed media paper. I remember that the teacher says not to use any mixed media, it, it has to be watercolor but I wanted to try for myself to see if that was true and I found that this paper is pretty good for, for watercolor as well. A tip that I can give you about the paper is that if you can get a watercolor block that has like a spiral, it's a lot better to make exercises and you should get like the cheaper ones for exercises, not this high quality, more professional papers. And the reason is because then you can, then you're not left with all of these like loose papers everywhere. You can just keep them in kind of like a watercolor sketchbook. I didn't have any, so I just used the blocks that I have. Okay, brushes. She recommends a lot of different brushes, but to be honest, I only used two brushes for the whole thing. I don't know if you can see. Number four and number five of these standard watercolor brushes, nothing special. You will need a pencil to make your drawings like your guidelines, you know. So I recommend something between, something between these three. Some people recommend like 2H, 3H and so on, but I think those are way too hard. And if you make the mistake to press a bit too hard, then you will get this like, uh, what do you call it? This like marks on your paper that you cannot get rid of. So with these three, as long as you're gentle, you won't have any problem. I think I used H for my, my for this course. Okay, next is erasers. Like, this is just like a normal eraser. I found that this kneadable eraser is amazing for watercolor. I mean, to make your sketches, sometimes if you make them like too hard, then you can just go like this over the whole thing. And it's, it's just perfect. <clears throat> and this uh, more precise eraser that I use for basically everything. And uh, this optional, I think it's really a really good idea to have one of these, especially when you're working with a lot of color because you can see your comp your complementary colors and you can make your designs pop more. Then you just need some water 
and some paper to be cleaning your brushes. These Schmincke watercolors are freaking expensive. I had seen them so many times because I live in Germany and this is a German brand, they have them everywhere. And um, the teacher of this course also uses them. It's like her favorite watercolors that she uses for all of her projects. So I was so curious to try them. And I think I should make a, a whole nother video about these watercolors and comparing them to cheaper watercolors. But the cool thing about these watercolors is that they sell, for example, the empty cases. This is a case for 24 colors, but they also sell a case for 48, I believe. So you can buy the empty case and then you can buy each color individually. So you can do it slowly because they're so expensive. And you can also build your own color palette because you know, each artist has different preferences, so yeah. The first exercise is what she calls a botanical study. I first made a quick sketch freehand of the different leaves. The teacher actually encourages her students to use a pencil the least possible, but because I didn't want to waste any of this paper, I decided to sketch everything just to be sure not to mess anything up. A tip that I can give you is to remember to never wipe off any of the watercolors that you, that you have been mixing because you can just reactivate them with some water and they work perfectly well. I remember I used to clean everything up after, after using some watercolors and that was a total waste of color. Another thing is that uh, I always try to keep my palette as clean as possible. So the way I do that is um, I never put my brush in a pan unless I first have rinsed it in my water. These three techniques are really basic and simple. Wet on dry is just putting your color directly on the paper like I did. Wet on wet is putting plain water on the paper first and then adding the color to create interesting textures. And negative space is making a first layer with a lighter color and then working darker layers on top, but keeping some of the first layer visible. And you can do this with many layers. What's important with watercolors is to work up your layers from light to dark, unlike most other painting media. And of course, you need to wait until your first layer is completely dry to go ahead and work on the next. Otherwise, you will accidentally end up with a wet on wet technique. The second part of the first exercise is to start making more complex leaves applying the three techniques. The teacher actually wants you to learn how to use different shapes of brushes for different shapes of leaves. To be honest with you, I couldn't use any of my other brushes because I destroyed them when oil painting. So there is another tip for you. Keep your brushes separate. Cheap ones for oil painting, if you do oil painting, and the higher quality brushes for watercolors. Because with watercolors, you rarely destroy a brush. They last for many, many years, at least for me. I was lucky that I was able to make all of the leaves with only the two brushes that I showed you before. But one of the purposes of this exercise was to help you learn how to make a leaf with a single stroke to save time or whatever, or to make more organic shapes. At this point, I had to wait about 20 minutes to be able to continue with the top layers. To make the top layers, you need to have quite a steady hand. That's why it's recommended to make the course for beginners first. 
There you will make some pulls and precision exercises that are for complete beginners. And this is all about practice, practice, practice. When you make these transitions of colors, you have to be really careful to clean your brush and your water before taking a new color from another pan. Otherwise, your pan will end up a complete muddy mess. In the second exercise, I had to make a few sketches of ideas for a congratulations card. In the course, the teacher is designing a wedding invitation. You choose what you want to do for a final project. I made very similar designs as the teacher to give you a good idea of how the course is. From all four designs, the upper right is the one I like the most, so that's the one I chose to use for my final project. Because we're designing a card, we need to add some text. Making lettering with watercolors is not easy. You need to have very good pulse and precision, a good control of the amount of water that you're using, a good control of how much you press down your brush and just a steady hand in general. All you need for this is practice, practice, practice. There is no way around that. First you will practice simple strokes, up thin and down thick. Then you will choose a font that you would like to learn how to make with watercolors and you have to make the whole alphabet. When you feel that you already are getting a better control of it, you can practice writing exactly what you want to write on your final project. Once you have practiced enough and you feel confident, you can start putting together everything that you learned in the final project. This one you should make on better quality paper if you are planning to give it like a real use. Okay, now 
now that I have finished all of the illustration of my final project, I have to now make sure that it's as clean as possible because the last part of this course is learning how to digitalize it and make some tweaks to make it as, as perfect as you would like it to be. Because remember, the, the purpose of this course is for you to learn watercolor. Uh, watercolor illustrations that you can actually sell on platforms like Etsy or any other stock image platform. The last lessons of this course teach you how to digitalize your work. The teacher guides you step by step on how she does it. And you know, that is the, that's what I like the most about Domestica, is that you're learning from people who actually make a living from what they're teaching you. So you get to learn from professionals who teach you how to turn this into an income, if that's what you want. Of course, doing it as a hobby is also great. Ana Victoria uses a scanner and then edits her work in Photoshop. I don't have either of those, so I found another way around it. I took a really good picture of my work, as you just saw, and then I found a way to do exactly what she did in Photoshop in Procreate, which is the only digital art software that I have. I think Photoshop is a lot more professional but for this specific work that she did, I think that Procreate also has the perfect tools. So the purpose of this last step is to make some tweaks like, for example, erasing the background of the illustration uh, to get a, a very clean print, you know. You can also move some elements around, change the sizes, add some text if you need to you name it. And for example, if you make like an accidental smudge while you're working, which often happens with watercolors, here you can easily fix that. So this is how our picture looked before editing and this is how it looks after editing. I'm pretty happy with the results of the colors. I think it, it looks even a bit nicer and vibrant on the final digital version.